Hello everyone and welcome! The quest to recreate the Dukes of Hazard in 125th scale continues. In today's video, call it science, call it senseless destruction, I just call it fun. Today we're going to be crashing into things and finding out if pasta can look like wood and cookies can look like concrete when crashed into by a 125th scale recreation of the general. I've got some specific stunts from the show I'm wanting to recreate, and before I start building some sets, I need to do a little R&D, that of course meaning research and destruction. I've previously talked a bit about some ideas for what kind of materials to use, and even asked you all for your suggestions. I'm wanting some breakable wood beams for fence smashing and barn roof collapsing. Once again, you all have come through with some awesome ideas. Some made sense like using balsa wood, while others were a little more outside the box. In fact, speaking of outside the box, let's start off with one suggestion that I knew I had to try the moment I saw it, and that's wafer cookies. Now these were what I picked up. I think there are a few different kinds of cookies, or at least a few different shapes that are referred to as wafer cookies. These here are what I think of when I think of a wafer cookie. I'm sure many of you are familiar with these, but basically they're very sandy, crumbly, crunchy. I think these are pretty much just pure sugar with a little flour and 10 other ingredients, which I don't know what they are or how to even pronounce some of them. I don't really know how else to describe them, but I did select these in particular due to the rectangular shape. While right away, I didn't think that these would necessarily be all that great for creating wooden beams. I thought maybe for making walls or concrete barriers, these could be very useful. They're way too thick right out of the bag, but notice the layers. There's some kind of icing or glue or something in between each layer, and it's very easy to separate them and use them as sort of building blocks. Eager to see the way the cookie crumbles, both figuratively and literally, I built a little wall that would be a few feet high in 125th scale, sort of like a concrete retaining wall or barrier. I used hot glue for fast and easy assembly. With the wall built, it's time to smash through it. The result looks awesome. Again, not so much like a wooden beam, but this would definitely look cool for certain stunts. It sort of resembles something like concrete. Not satisfied with just that short wall though, I built another one, this time three cookies tall, which puts it well above the height of the car. A pretty cool result, though since the hot glue is flexible, you can see how a lot of it kind of stayed together rather than kind of falling around in pieces. I think it would look even cooler to use a glue that dries more solid, but this was still a lot of fun to see. Unfortunately though, despite surviving almost countless jumps at this point, smashing through cookies of all things proved to be a bit too much for this rear ball end on the drive shaft. The push bar also once again came off, but nothing new there. I glued it back on once again. Fortunately, after a little more work, the car was once again ready to smash through some more obstacles. After having some fun smashing through the cookies, I next wanted to create a simple wooden fence to crash through. I needed something that would replicate lumber, not only for fencing but other destructible objects as well. After some bench testing, I really liked the idea of using fettuccine pasta. It's cheap, already looks like a wooden beam, and I like how it breaks. Note the difference between the balsa wood as I break it and the pasta. Although this particular pasta is more flexible than the wood, it snaps and goes flying with some force, and a little more dramatic looking, and that's what I want. The balsa is definitely going to come in handy for some other stuff, but for the fence today, I wanted to try out the pasta. I designed a fence holder piece that I could use to simply slot in each breakable fence section, smash through it, and repeat. After that was completed, I used the pasta to create a number of fence sections that I'll be crashing the car through. I made a few different designs just to see what difference each may make. 
With these parts made, I went ahead and applied a few quick coats of paint just to make them look a little more like the real thing. Next stop was to head outside where I could get some nice shots and better lighting, but I ran into a few issues. As you can see, the fence bent and just let the car pass right through. The bigger issue though was that I couldn't keep the car going straight. This was due to excessive slop in the steering, I wonder how that happened, and the texture of the concrete. So after a quick little fix to get the steering tightened up and relocating indoors, I did some more testing. Now once again, my apologies for the poor lighting and therefore poor video quality, but it's good enough for these quick test runs. So I set up the fence and this time I jammed in a couple of pieces of pasta into the slot so the fence wouldn't pop out, but as you can see that didn't quite work out. So I decided to set it back up again and give it another try and I ended up missing it entirely and destroying the permanent 3D printed fence piece instead. A cool wreck no doubt, but that's not what I wanted to do. I ended up hot gluing the fence into place instead of using the holder as obviously that's no longer an option. Once again, I veered off course and while I got some impressive air, that wasn't really what I wanted. So I patched the fence back up and I was able to get the best crash of the evening right after. This hit here was just about perfect. I don't like the way the bottom section sort of snapped back into place, but every other part of this crash was awesome. I love the way the pasta shatters and flies everywhere, which is exactly the look that I wanted. Now for the remaining crashes, I used fence pieces that had four rails instead of just three, and I think the issue with the four rail fences is that the front wheels tended to drive up and over the top of the bottom rail, which results in crashes such as this, where it just sort of takes off the top three rails. I glued what remained from the last jump onto the base, and once again got a little off course and crashed pretty dramatically. A cool rollover, but more broken parts, this time a broken steering knuckle. Although replacing the knuckle would have been ideal, to save some time I simply glued it back together and hoped for the best. I had a rematch with that last fence piece and I got it this time, but again as you can see that lower rail likes to trip the car and send it flying, which is kind of cool looking but not really what I wanted here. One thing I think I want to do going forward is keep that lowest rail at a height that it will be hit by the front of the body and not the front wheels. That little ramp leading up to it probably doesn't help either. The final hit that I did would probably be the second best of the evening. While I forgot to film what I did, I pre-damaged the fence by scoring it with a knife and taking off a few chunks here and there. I really like the way this fence piece smashed here. At this point it was getting late, so that's all the testing that I did on this evening. And while I still want to do some more testing and experimenting, I was able to learn a few things. The first thing is, as I mentioned before, I want to keep the lowest rail on the fence high up enough so that the front of the body hits it rather than the wheels, which will likely just go up and over the top. Also, I want to damage and score the fence with a knife prior to hitting it, as well as build the fence using smaller pieces, like instead of having the rails go end to end, I'll make the rails separate pieces going between each post. I think this will help get a better smash and avoid it just breaking off in one giant piece like what happened on a few tests. If that's happening too much though, I could probably also make the outer posts thicker and therefore stronger. If I can get it right, I love the way this pasta smashes into flying pieces, but I am curious to see how the balsa wood might compare, as although it doesn't seem to almost shatter like the pasta does, it's less flexible which is an advantage here. I certainly look forward to doing some more crashes and other stunts. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. 
I certainly had a lot of fun putting this one together. These videos involving smashing through things or jumping are always a ton of fun, and it seems like a lot of you enjoy them as well. But that is going to be all for today's video. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.